This is the one that Cone Springs in backwards. Are you still recording? I'm not gonna post that, but <laughs> I'm gonna have to take this one back apart. Welcome back, guys. This is gonna be part two. Uh, last night, we took the disc apart, and today we have all the LSDs. So we're gonna talk about breakaway torque, and how we're gonna do it is Dean the Legend Palmer made a cool little invention for us over here. We took some of the axle stubs, so we have uh, axle stub from an FRS, because Justin's car, and then we have one for an S2K. And we also have the ones for, so we're gonna do for, we're gonna do your car first, so. Yep, so yeah. we have two Geigens. Yeah. Uh, one of these is one that is set from OS, the way it comes from in the box. One of them is the, is the one out of my car that we had specifically set up. And then we have three <laughs> S2000 Geikens. These are two brand new ones, uh, Jake's and Felipe's. These are untouched. And then we have the one out of Tiffany's car. And then this is an ATS Carbon uh, that Jake bought last year that lived two events before it broke. Uh, this, is, this is a great example of, and this costs more money than a Geiken. And it definitely was not, not better. Didn't work the best. So, so which one are we trying out first? So yeah, so let's put, let's see. This is the damaged one. Put that. Another little cool tool that. So this is the one that came out of my car last year. This is the one that has the vibration in it. Um, but this is the one that is set specifically for the size of tire we run, the weight of the car and everything. So we use a beam type torque wrench. So come over here, you can see we're set at zero. This shows in foot pounds. So keep in mind, these are not specific, precise numbers. These are just comparisons from one unit to another. But what you're gonna see when Tiffany pulls on the torque wrench, it's gonna show you at what uh, pound it breaks away and then at what torque it holds throughout the swing. So what that's telling you is when you go into a corner, how much it takes under throttle for the LSD to break free and then how much torque it takes to keep them broken from each other. Do you think I can break this one away? Yeah, the the first you hold the, table? the first little the first little one will be kind of rough. Oh, that was oh that yeah. wasn't. So I was I'm about oh, 45, 50. So now come to a stop. All right. Just come to a stop. Let off all the way. Okay. So now when you push forward, you'll see it'll go up about 35, 40. There it breaks away, and then it holds about 30 foot pounds. So like I said, this is one, and, that, and that's both directions. It doesn't make a yeah, difference. Yeah, 30 this way. Um, this is one we had set up. So this is one, we typically set ours around uh, 25 to 45 foot pounds is kind of the number uh, that we're looking for. So now we'll show you. Yep, put that, no, this is a good one. Oh, that was the broken one. This is a, uh, another, Another Geiken, and this one is straight out of the box. It has been ran, so it's already lubricated, but this one has not been specifically set up. So this is as they come out of the box. So come over here, you'll see the difference. The, the breakaway difference is, is much, much different. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see how aggressive the breakaway is. So now when you now come forward with it, Tiff. Oh my gosh, someone's so, gonna work so out. So now keep going. So now once it's broke, it's not you cheap. can see <laughs> you, you can see how how aggressive it is yeah. and they they set these up they set these up this way because this is you know for a larger a car running a larger tire a heavier car um you know that is when you would want a stiffer breakaway and a higher torque value but what the, what this diff would do is this diff is going to stay locked under d-cell and when you go to turn into the corner the tires are not going to unlock from each other and the car is going to want to push or understeer. So we are going to, tomorrow we are gonna to take both of these apart and we are going to mimic the settings in this one into this one. Now, also I think I said in episode, or part one of the Diff Chronicles, we talked about this one has a proprietary piece inside um, that is not available to the public. It was something that ended up inside of this when I bought it on eBay. And what it's supposed to do is make the torque breakaway much smoother. So I don't know how much of that is why when you saw Tiffany break this away, why it was so aggressive, how much of that is from that proprietary piece and how much of that is from the cone springs inside and the clutch layout. So Tiffany is switching our custom made diff tester oh, yeah. Yeah. over to the S2000 side. 
This is all Dean here. He should patent this. Dean spent <laughs> 20 minutes on this. <laughs> it's definitely helpful. Get a little tight so, you know, you can always... Perfect. So... <laughs> super strong. So there's yours. Start with so that one. So we want to do mine first? Yeah, let's, let's, let's start with yours first. Let's start with one, what a good one looks like. Well, this is after we sent mine in too, the same as... Okay. Nice and gentle. <laughs> Here's your stub. All right, um, but this one, oh. So this is the same as this one. This one is also set up for Tiffany's specific application. Different nope, same socket. All right. And again, oh geez. So oh, the initial I'm... breakaway, just till you get it going. Okay, yeah. so now you can see. It's about right. 35, 30. Yep, now go back the other way and you'll see the breakaway is nice and smooth. 30 foot pounds and it drops down to about 25 foot pounds. So very similar. These were set up identical to each other, yeah. but Tiffany's has probably double the track miles uh, that mine has on it. Okay, so let's show them just, what- Just always gets the new stuff. I mean, that, <laughs> this was new at one time. <laughs> Tiffany has just molested it. <laughs> All right, so use one of the- These yep. are one of, we're gonna fleet base our jakes. So this, this is not a super fair comparison because these don't. are dry. These come straight out of the box this way. These have never been ran. So these do not have any oil in them. Um, but we'll just kind of give you an idea of just how tight they are. If I can get this. Yeah, this, this, these, the these, these are pretty rough. Ready? Okay. Oh, that was, oh wait. Nope, not even breaking. Yeah. Not, so it just, max, it just maxed the torque wrench out. So, yeah. so we're gonna, we're gonna pull, nice. we're gonna pull this one apart tomorrow, both uh, fully phased and jigs. We're gonna pull these apart. We're gonna soak the disc so that we can get a good, fair comparison between uh, the, the new ones and one set up. So this is the broken ATS uh, slammer on there. Oh, what? No, you're right. Oh. But it's just not hollow. It's yeah, like, why is this one not hollow? Completely right? different. Huh. Completely different. Nice unit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? This is, you ready? This would be crazy. <laughs> so we we'll, we're gonna tear this one apart and find out what it needs. It would be nice to repair it because it's really worth nothing more than a paperweight right now. Yeah. Um, but this is a good example for you guys. This is not really a case of spend more money, get a better product, because this actually costs more money. But this is a good example of buying a quality product that is proven to do the job. I mean, OS Geiken has been, in my opinion, in most people's opinion, the top the top that. LSD for road course applications. Could this be better for other things? Sure, um, it probably holds down more papers. It does weigh a little bit more than these, but that's about all it's good for. So, so tomorrow yeah. we'll tear these apart and uh, show you guys the insides and why they are the way they are. And, uh, and we'll, we're gonna verify that Tiffany's diff and my diff are both in good shape. Make sure the clutch discs aren't wore out. And then we're gonna set up Jake and Felipe's to match Tiffany's. Yep. So. Yep. So we'll see you in the morning. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Okay. Uh, welcome back, guys. We took the LSDs, we explained them yesterday, and today we are going to take them apart and see if we can match the shapes and put them back together. Yeah, hopefully, most importantly, put them back together, but yeah. Yeah. We're going to start with the uh, OS Geiken from uh, the factory, the factory unit that is this brand new, untouched, uh, never been used. We're going to take this one apart, we're going to lay the pieces out, then we're going to take Tiffany's apart and compare what the differences are between the two since we need to set Jake and Felipe's diffs to match Tiffany's. Yep. Take these bolts out. They're not very tight. We call that Tiffany tight. They don't need to be very tight because the halves are held together by the uh, ring gear. Should be able to take this all out of here. Okay. Do you want me to start on mine? Just the, just the bolt. Yeah, yeah. All right, so this is the inside. So here's your cone spring. You can see why it's called a cone spring. It's a cone. 
So this is, we have different thicknesses of cone springs which set the preload on the clutch plates. So we're gonna take this apart and hopefully put it back together in the same orientation. Ooh. Okay. So. Justin's played a lot of Tetris, so this should I'm be. Pretty good at Tetris, if I'm honest. I'm actually already lost. <laughs> Okay, so here is the pieces of the Geiken. These are, so we'll start with this. This center section is what controls part of the preload. So these bolts that go through here, these have springs inside. We have softer and stiffer springs in here, and that is what sets the initial torque. So the softer the springs are, the less torque it takes for this to expand and push on the clutch plates. So these go in here. And as you can see, half of these, so here, let me show you half of these. Half of these are steel plates. And the other half are friction plates. The steel plates, right on the inside of the differential and the friction discs ride on the housing. So these discs are always, are always rubbing each other. And this is what is setting your friction. This is what sets the preload and the breakaway is all based on how tight the cone spring and the springs on these bolts push these plates together. And you can see there is a lot of plates. And what makes it nice having this many plates is uh, the wear is very minimal because you have so much, so much surface area across so many plates, you don't have to worry about wearing out a clutch disc. It's, it's similar to having a single disc clutch in a high horsepower car and having like a triple disc. Since you only have one disc, you have to have twice the clamping force versus having three discs, you can have less clamping force because you have more surface area. So, uh, so yeah, so we will start looking at how these are put together. Tiffany's slowly but surely. Why well, didn't we interrupt? <laughs> and I was paying apart. attention. Which one's called the spider? There's something, isn't there one of those called like- So a, these are the spider gears. Those are the spider gears. And those are what engage with this. And so when your axles are turning, it pushes this apart and that's what engages all of the clutches. That's what makes one wheel drive basically off the other wheel. Then you can see this cutaway here, this is what changes between a one way, a one and a half way and a two way. So you can see there are two different ramp angles here. The steeper ramp angle is your acceleration. So what that's gonna do is that's going to lock the diff quicker on this tight ramp angle here. And then on D cell, you still have a bit of a ramp angle. So it's still gonna stay engaged on D cell, but at about 50%. Now on a one way, this bottom here would be flat. You would have no engagement on D cell. Uh, that's typically what they would use for like a front wheel drive car. The problem with that on a rear wheel drive platform is the rear end is gonna wanna wander. You don't have anything keeping uh, a, a torque on the rear wheels to keep them from wandering. And then on a drift car, you will have even ramps on both sides. And what that'll mean is basically you'll be fully locked on D cell as well as acceleration. And what that's gonna wanna do is it's gonna wanna kick the rear end out going into a corner, which is typically how those guys initiate the drift. Not something we're gonna want for road course scenarios. No, so but when we go drift. When we go drifting, we will not buy one of these because they're too expensive. No, okay, but. so I did, I have mine. So we're gonna see what all right, so the difference is. So yeah, I don't keep wanna, all your I'm pieces keep all separate. My, I wasn't as good at Tetris, so we're gonna make sure I do not forget anything. All right, okay, so, so I have my cone spring. So, so flip her upside down, you have to take that off. Yep. Now flip it upside down on the table. Yep, hold that so it can't fall out. Yeah. Easy. Ooh, oh, stuff's flopping out. Okay, now nice and easy to take the top off. My cone spring's stuck in there. Oh, and I have a gear. Well, it's in there. Okay. Didn't wanna, it's really in there, huh? Okay. 
saying? Yeah. So. We'll have to put a mic on mic on these because the differences are are pretty minimal. No, we'll we'll check, but but they're pretty close actually. Uh, Dean, this is not as thin as we expected it to be, which makes me wonder. Ah, uh, yes. So what's on? So move this over there. <laughs> so Dean. So if you guys, those of you guys that don't know who Dean the Legend Palmer is. This is Dean, he does all of our chassis setup. A lot of the fabrication, cage building is all done by Dean. Uh, he also has like- He's a secret ninja. Oh, he got like 40, 50 years of background and all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I mess with a lot of parts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so so what Dean and I were wondering is exactly what they're doing here. You can see, if you look at the tangs here, let's put them side by side. If you look at the two clutch stacks, Notice every every other steel disc, it goes steel friction, steel friction, steel friction. It's all opposites. If you look at Tiffany's, they're only using half the plates. You can see they have steel to steel and friction to friction. So what they're doing is they're actually disengaging half of the plates, which then reduces your surface area, which reduces your friction, gives you a lighter breakaway and gives you a lighter overall torque. Which is what we were hoping that they were doing because this is something that we can do without buying additional pieces. If you want to check these. Don't make some. Yeah, 70,000. Well, we know which one's yours because it's dirty. 65,000. 70. Okay, so they're close, but they're not the same. Um, the other thing, let's see. So it looks like they're using. Don't take it apart, are you? So they have four four of the discs engaged. You can see steel, friction, steel, friction, steel. All of these that are doubled up don't do anything. All these are doing is just acting as a spacer, but these are all disengaged plates here. So the only problem with that is, is you gotta keep an eye because now we're wearing on less friction discs, so they're going to wear faster. So the reason we took Tiffany's diff apart in the first place was last time we opened, we drained the fluid on this, we had some debris come out that was not metallic, which made me wonder if it was friction material. But looking at this differential, uh, it's definitely not what is in here. It does not look like this. So I don't know. She, like I said, she has a bad pinion bearing. Could have yeah. been some debris from that. I'm not sure, but Peaches, what's up? <laughs> All right. All right, we are going to see if I put it back see together. if Tiffany put it together correctly. <laughs> see if we achieved similar to what I had before. Um, here, I'm going to push. Well, yep, about 25, 30 pounds. Nice, it feels smooth. Yes, it does. About 30. Where are we at 30? All right, so. I just want to make sure. Got to give it the old Ian Garou. Make sure my diff is. Yeah. You're going to wear it out. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see. So like I said, these have not been soaked in oil, same as before, but we did deactivate a bunch of plates. And let's see what we achieved on here. It's definitely less tight than it was. Oh, pretty tight though. Why is it so tight? Well, because they haven't been in oil, so we're gonna Soak this in some, soak it in some gear lube and retest it. Pull that one out. Put this one on there. Let's see if these are the same. Huh. Why does it seem notchy? Well, because they're just dry. But that one feels pretty decent. This is the one that cone springs in backwards. Are you still recording? I'm not gonna post that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take this one back apart. But not this one? This one's right. That, that, that's and, why and, and that's why this one feels decent. This one feels like what I'd expect. Because it should be heavier than Tiffany's. And it is. And is. Mm -hmm. All right, you got that all tightened up. And it'll work in now. <laughs> All right. We repaired the one that 
Tiffany put the cone springs in upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so we got all of it. Mm -hmm. So here is, let's see, this is the, this is the factory BRZ uh, OS Geiken. This one is straight out of the box. This one has been ran, but it does not, has not been set up from the factory for a specific application. So this is, the FRS is an eight inch ring gear instead of the S2000 seven inch ring gear. So everything is beefed up. Everything is bigger. Let me Not see. Better. Oh yeah, that's dead. No, definitely better. <laughs> definitely better. Yeah, so the cone spring, even the cone springs is. So I have a tuning kit at home with pieces, but I'm pretty sure, I don't think the cone springs are this big. So the tuning kit that I might, that I have at home might be for an S2000. I haven't used it yet, but. What are these cone springs like? So. Come on. So let's, what I need to do is we need to compare. We want to compare the insides of this one to the alleged special proprietary pieces that they said was in this one. So let me get this one pulled apart and we will compare uh, what's different between the two and see if there is actually, Tiffany's being nice and gentle over here with this one. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll compare the inside pieces and see if there truly is something different about this one or if uh, they're just pulling my leg. Okay, so this is the one out of my car that is damaged and needs to go in and get, the case needs to go in and get repaired. But we wanna see, we wanna see how this one is set up so that I can match it with this one. And we also wanna see what the secret pieces are on the inside, allegedly. Easy. Ooh. Oh boy, oh boy. Mm. That's a lot more beefier than Well, let's look at, hold on. Can you do that the right way? Oh, see, they're helical. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not fair. Oh yeah. So look at this. So look at the differences. So this is a factory piece that comes in the Geiken. This is the one that's in mine. And when they explained to me that it had a special, well, when, first of all, OS called me and was like, where did you get this diff? And I was like, I bought it on eBay. It came from Japan, from a demo car. And they were like, well, this has some pieces in here that we haven't even released yet. So uh, that's kind of cool. And it's Very cool. still in there. So, so this is supposed to engage, get rid of a lot of the chatter and make a smoother engagement because instead of engaging everything on, at the same, uh, how would you word that? At the same time. Yeah, this this is this is staging it, smoothing it. it. It's it's kind of a, a smooth transition going into it. Man, that's cool. So are you just gonna put that in yours, new one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the goal is just to put this one together with the normal parts and send it off for repair and put the new housing together with the super special race parts. You know, and go from super there. Super secret. So, super super secret. <laughs> so. This is what's going to go in that housing. That's pretty cool, though. That piece. Some good engineering. Some... That's super cool. So we were about to put this back together, uh, the two FRS diffs, and Dean and I just noticed. Uh, a very large difference between the two, uh, the way they're set up. So you can see you have four holes. This this particular this is the one that we uh, bought secondhand that we did not have set up. They have one. So these bolts have springs on them, and that is what allows this to spread out and engage the plates. This is missing one hole, uh, one one bolt on each hole. So this is missing four total. Here's the one that came out of my car. This one only has four bolts holding it together, which would mean this would lock much harder, right? This is quicker. Yeah, this would lock quicker than this one. And what Dean and I were talking, the fear, my fear is with the J series and the additional torque we're gonna gain over the F, that with this center section locking so quick, 
it's gonna give the car a tendency to wanna push on throttle. Okay. So we're gonna get to the apex, get on the throttle, and the car is gonna wanna push instead of be able to hold that, uh, that same radius coming out. Yeah. You don't wanna pick up a mid-corner push on that, and that's the easy way to solve it. Yeah, and that's, so uh, I think I talked about before, these, I have several different spring rates for these bolts. So not only do you have different spring rates, you have different cone springs, you can deactivate plates, you can also not put bolts and springs in. So that's interesting. So we're gonna try this one uh, and see, see how it feels. And we'll, uh, we'll keep you guys posted at the track. So. <laughs> so we got all the S2000 diffs are done. I reassembled the, uh, my damaged uh, Geiken. This one's ready to get sent in to get repaired. I'm gonna put together my one I'm gonna use this year. And we'll start getting these put back in the car and that'll be the end of our diff extravaganza. Yeah, and then so next we're gonna be working on the engine and get the heads in and yep, the final the assembly. Final assembly of the J-Series. That'll yeah. be another exciting video, so. Yeah, well, see you next time. Please subscribe. Thanks for tuning in.